is going on with my hair. Okay. Oh. Yeah, okay, that'll do. Oh, hello. I'm having a morning where, I say morning, it's now afternoon. I am really, really struggling to get started with things today. I've had so many ideas of things that I want to film and planty things that I absolutely need to do. And you know when you just have those days where you want to be super productive and you just feel everything is a little bit overwhelming? That's how I'm feeling. So, I have decided on a task. It is a task that I've been putting off for a while and I definitely need to get on top of, but I think it will look amazing once it's done and I thought it'd be quite fun to bring you guys with me for it. It is tackling my Raffidophora tetrasperma, which is growing a little bit wild at the moment. And I will talk you through my plans for it in a minute because I think it's gonna look pretty cool when I'm done and hopefully the plant's gonna be a lot happier and healthier as well. But first, if you're new here, hi, my name's Claire and this is Yoli. I make videos all about houseplant care, sharing tips and tricks I've learned over the years to help keep your plants happy and healthy. And yeah, that is the plan for the video at the moment. I will probably give you some kind of like care tips and growing tips on the plant as we go through as well, because this one, as you can see, has got pretty big very, very quickly. I got this one about a year and a half ago as a one leaf cutting, so it's growing very well for me. Uh, but yeah, that's, that's the plan. Let's get going. I hope you enjoy it. Let's get into it. Ooh, a fungus snap just flew on my face. So, I don't usually film from this angle, but I have got myself a nice new office chair and I've brought my desk back from my mum's house and I'm basically, what has sparked this video and sparked this plant project is that I want to create a productive workspace because that is something that I'm lacking. I'm currently just editing my videos, doing all of my work at the kitchen dining table, which is very small, very crowded and not particularly practical. So with Ross moving in soon, we've kind of just been doing a little bit of rejigging and thinking about how we can make the space work for both of us. And one of the main things that I think has been important for me is getting a good workspace. That actually allows me to not do this, stretch out and be productive and get lots done and still keep it planty. So my Raffidophora tetrasperma, I had this one previously climbing up over the wall just around the dining area and I loved the look of that. But what I found now that I've put it up just on this level as it is here and I've trained it to kind of go across the wall is firstly all of its foliage is just pointing down because it's been used to growing one way previously and now I've just altered it and it's freaking out a little bit. Um, but also it's given me so many new growth points down the bottom here that I feel like I, like, although I love the look of it when it's upright because it makes the plant look really lovely and bushy, I think I'm gonna potentially prune those back and propagate them, maybe take some to the next plant swap. I just feel like I prefer something a little bit more delicate and simple to frame this space so that it doesn't feel too kind of like, I don't know, overwhelming and crowded. And that's kind of how I feel like it feels at the moment. Um, just also in terms of generally caring for this plant, it's very dusty because it has been in this corner. It has been slightly neglected. I can tell that it's got some yellowing leaves. It hasn't been repotted since I first potted this plant up, which was um, probably about a year ago now. So I think I'm probably gonna transfer it into semi-hydro just to kind of give the plant a little bit of weight there so it's not gonna kind of easily fall over. And also, you know how much I love semi-hydro. It feels like a good choice. So yeah, I'm gonna start by just getting it down off the wall and getting it out of the soil it's currently in, having a look at the roots and we can dig it from there. Okay, I feel like I might need to spread this plant out on the floor to, to be able to do anything to it. I thought I was gonna take it to the table. That was my plan, but it's incredibly long now. Um, and I think also because it has been over in that corner for such a long time, it has just got quite neglected. Like, I don't know if you can see in this light, some of its leaves are quite yellow. So I think it needs a really good prune. So let me figure out where I'm gonna do this and then we can get into the get into the soil. Um, 
gonna just have a look at the plants and see what needs to be tackled. Okay, so what I'm gonna start with is I'm gonna trim back the sections that are just, the sections that usually I would really encourage on a plant, the sections that are making it a lot fuller down the bottom, like the ways that it's branching off just there. Um, just because, as I say, I can propagate them. If I do decide that I want the plant to be a lot fuller in the future, if I decide to grow it a different way, then I can just replant them into the same soil and I can fill the plant out. But at the moment, it's just making that wall a little bit too busy. So thinking about what's best for the plant, but also to keep out styling the plant. Uh, that's what I'm gonna do. Um, and I know, as always, I should be using pruning shears or something a little bit hardier. I do have them somewhere, but I always end up just using scissors because it's easier. But yeah, wow, that's actually a massive section I've taken just there. See, I'm gonna pop that and all of the ones that I take to one side. Uh, and as I say, I might take some to the plant swap. This is such a gorgeous, fast growing plant. And I know it's one that a lot of people still don't have. It was really, really popular a couple of years ago, but I feel like, oh, there's actually a leaf about to fall off there. But yeah, I haven't seen this plant. I just haven't seen it about as much recently. Like it's not one that's been cropping up in garden centers quite so much. And I don't, I mean, I don't really think of this plant is particularly rare where I'm from. It's, um, it's potentially one of the most common types that you can find, but it just hasn't seemed to, the demand for it hasn't seemed to be there as much, is what I'm saying. So yeah, plant swap a few bits and probably, as always, keep a few bits back for myself as well so I can decide what I want to do further down the line. These are lovely sections, really lovely. But yeah, cool. So now what I'm left with is just the main vine. So what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna get this plant through to the shower. I'm gonna give it a really good shower down just to make sure all the dust is gone. Just get it looking a little bit shinier and healthier. I might also prune back some of the yellowing leaves at the bottom. I know I would usually say to do that, but they actually for once look worse on camera than they do in person. Usually I say it's the other way around. I'll decide on that afterwards, I think. For now, I'm gonna go give the plant a shower. I've just poured soil into the bath. So I'm just gonna get what's left of the soil in the pot that didn't go in the bath out and just have a look at the roots. I know it is really, really, really dry, but often when you're transferring a plant into semi-hydroponics, often having the roots quite dry is a good thing because so long as they're not like completely bone dry, obviously then that is more prone to cause things like rotting. But if they are quite dry, typically the soil just crumbles away quite easily. Um, so you do want to get rid of as much of the soil as possible. Um, but this is actually my first time, I've got so many new angles today. This is my first time filming from here today and you might not recognize my background and that's because me and Ross have been doing lots and lots of rearranging, particularly in the room that I'm in now. We've been doing lots of kind of like renovation DIY projects. If you're on my Patreon, then you will have had a little tour already because I know I am kind of logging the process over there, but it's, it is very much a work in progress, but this is a really lovely space now to be able to come in and do little repots and whatnot. So yeah, hopefully this will be the first of many more. Um, okay. So I'm, <laughs> I really thought considering how big this plant is, it would have a huge root system and it really doesn't. In fact, the root system is, is really quite small. Let me just get as much of the soil off as I can and I'll show you. 
Okay, so the root system it's got is tiny. And I'm not quite sure how this has been keeping the plant going for such a long time. It's also putting out so much new growth at this end. And it just seems insane that it's been able to do all of that with such teeny tiny roots. In fact, some of them, I've got some here that are, I mean, really quite kind of crispy and crunchy and definitely not doing the plant any favours. This is probably my own fault letting the plant dry out too much. But I'm just wondering how, yeah, how this plant has been growing so well for me. Um, so, so what I think I will probably do, I'm just going to give the small root system just the tiniest, tiniest prune just to make sure that all of the roots I'm potting are alive because if they are dead roots then obviously again as I've just said makes them much more prone to rotting uh, and that is the last thing I want for this plant so I think what I'll do there are several nodes here I think I could probably pot all of them into semi-hydro to be honest and then hopefully it would encourage some more points to root as well Oh dearie me, I don't know, I was expecting a massive root system and this is just next to nothing. I'm going to go ahead with my plan to put this plant in semi-hydro, but I think I'm just going to have to really carefully monitor it over the next few weeks. And I mean, I thought this yellowing was literally just because the plant was very dusty and I hadn't really been paying it much attention, but I think it's probably maybe due to the fact that it doesn't have many roots. I just don't know. I'm baffled by this. I mean, it kind of just goes to show how much of a hardy plant it is. It is honestly, I mean, the Raphidophora tetrasperma is a plant that can survive in pretty much any conditions. And I have grown mine in so many different conditions over my time of owning the plant. Like when I first got it, it was growing in my mum's conservatory. It had beautiful light all day round. And now, as I say, it's been in a fairly dark corner for the last kind of nine, ten months, and it's been doing really well for me. So, yeah, so I, I mean, it's, it's kind of against all odds doing, doing quite good things. So I hope this isn't going to throw the plant into shock, and I hope that I don't have to make a very sad video in the coming weeks, like, chopping this plant up. Um, yeah. Very, like I say, very careful monitoring will be in order. And this is uh, Soil Ninja's equivalent of Lechuza Pond that I'm using. It's kind of just a very fine mix. It doesn't contain any added fertilizer, so you can just fertilize it yourself. I'm probably gonna avoid fertilizing this plant at first when I transfer it, just because I don't want anything else to potentially cause this plant to rot. But yeah, as I say, the bottom section of the stem just there, up until that point where its first leaf is, I'm going to pot all of that down in there and hope that even if the main root system isn't enough, it will start to root again from other points and then hopefully this plant will soon <laughs> have a lovely big root system. Because yeah, I was expecting that to be way more. This is the first planting thing I've done in what feels like, probably not a week, but in, in at least kind of five days, I would say. It's been so busy recently. I've, um, I've, I've, I'm not one of these people, I'm such a home bird and I'm not usually that good at like getting lots of social plans in the diary because I feel like my social battery runs quite low quite easily. Not that I don't love going out and seeing my friends, but both me and Ross have just had a lot going on and we're also in the process of starting to move him in and move his stuff in and do lots of home projects and it just feels like I haven't stopped. It just feels like I haven't stopped. So it's quite nice. It always is quite nice when I've had a manic few days of just kind of like doing things left, right and centre to just come back and do some nice planty things. It always feels quite relaxing. 
and this would feel even more relaxing if I felt more confident about where this plant was going in terms of root system stuff, if you know what I mean. Like the journey of this plant. I hope this is the start of the next wonderful journey for this plant and I will be giving you lots of good updates on it soon. I really hope that's the case. Um, but yeah, so I've potted it just into a little tower pot of Lechuza Pond and I know this isn't the best fit ceramic pot wise. I know it does stick out a little bit. For the time being, I'm not that fussed about it. That's what I've got on hand, so that's what I'm using. And then, yeah, I'll just keep a reservoir of water about that big at the bottom of the pot. And now that this plant is up high on my desk, at least I'll be able to look at it and kind of monitor it a little bit better. But yeah, oh, I don't know why that's just really thrown me and now it's making me feel worried for the plant. But I think all I can do is try. So let's go get it back into position and try and figure out a way to make it look good. <laughs> the plant's currently just held to the wall with these little S clips. And these are amazing for training plant vines to climb the wall. I use them for pretty much all of the vines that I have trained to climb in my flat. So I've got only a couple of these left, but I think that should be enough if I need to add in a few more as kind of like supports, because as I say, I'd like the foliage facing a little bit more out than it was before. So yeah, with the couple that I've got, I'm gonna try and make that happen. <laughs> Okay, I've just finished and this is what it's looking like and looks wise, I much prefer it like this. I think like maybe you can't tell as much here, but if I stand back a little bit, looking at it from afar, it just frames that space really beautifully now without it feeling too like cluttered and crowded. Don't get me wrong, I know that my desk needs some massive organisation. It's literally just arrived. It's definitely not the most organised space in the world. But I feel like that just, I don't know, I just really like it like that and I much prefer it to how it was before. But as I say, I am just a little bit concerned now about the plant. So I will make sure to do updates in my next few videos and just let you know how she's getting on. Hopefully, if she's been growing well with the small root system already, then it will just continue that way. I know I also could, and I was actually thinking this, so I was putting it up. I could put the pot at this end here. And as it continues to grow, I could then train it to go up. I might do that at some point. I'm not quite sure. That is a decision for the future. But yeah, I hope that you've enjoyed this video. I, I've been wanting to do that for a while and I'm really glad that I got through it in this video with you guys. And if you were doing planty stuff as well, I really hope you got lots done. And yes, please keep your fingers crossed for this plant because I love it so much. I'm so proud of it. I'm so proud of how far it's come and I don't want it to start going downhill. So yeah, keep your fingers crossed and I'll let you know. But I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, have a lovely day and I will see you in the next video. Bish bash bosh. <laughs>